I just want to take a minute to thank all of you for being here. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm known out in the world as a media visibility expert, and I'm really glad that you're here. I think this is an incredibly auspicious time. And I'm doing something I've never done before in ways I've never done it before, and I think that that is actually the way right now. Uh, doing things in different ways and really being very fluid and being in the lane of the holy flow, if you will. So I answered a call from people because I knew a lot of people out there were so much wanting to write their book and to utilize this really auspicious time to get their message and their story out there. And that's why we're here to together. So just a few pieces of housekeeping, if you will, make sure that you are on mute. And it looks like you all are, so thank you, bless you for that. Hi, Nicole, hi, Judy, hi, Kristen, hi, Rowena, Joe. There's so many more of you out there. I was really tickled by how many people signed up because I have to tell you that when I decided, this is so my life, I decided this, I put out the word two days ago and um, I went in the back end and I suddenly saw, for some reason I get any notice, but when I saw the uh, number of people who had registered for this, I was guffawed. So we are well over 50 people who registered. That's great in one to two days. That is very telling about how many people wanna get their message out there. So yes, I should be pinned to the front uh, since I'll be leading this. I want you to stay to the end. Why? Because I'm doing a Q&A. And if you have questions, I can answer them. I'm gonna invite you, as I wrote in the chat, you'll see a little bit of instructions there ahead of time. And you're absolutely welcome to write a chat, just know that probably your fellow participants are gonna see it, I can't, because I'm gonna be off and running here and trying to deliver as much content to you as possible in this time. However, at the end, I will do my best. I don't know how many um, questions I'll be able to take depending on time, because I really wanna honor time for all of us. And, and I am going to also ask you to stay to hear about how you can work with me at the end. Um, that's pretty important, I think. And I'm going to post, just so you have it throughout, <clears throat> this, beautiful, uh, this beautiful link, because some of you are going to want it ahead of time. And just to make sure that you have the link throughout our conversation for when you are ready for it. Okay, this is sort of going all over the place hilariously. Um, so let's go back here. And then this is just all the fun techie stuff, and then we'll be off and running. Okay, beautiful. So thanks for taking time out of your life right now to be with me. I'm, I'm thrilled. And so here's what we're gonna learn today, and this is what today is all about. This is about how to write a book and how to get it published this year. And I am going to cover some tips, I'm gonna cover some secrets, and I'm gonna do it today in the webinar. My goal about being here with you today is to inspire something. Like with anything, you know, especially for an hour or something, if you get a takeaway that you can take out into the world to generate, that's fantastic. That will make me super happy. There'll be a big light year step ahead. If you walk away with a relationship with me or a connection with me or an understanding of what I do out in the world, that will make me super happy as well. So it may also, by the way, be a connection to yourself that you didn't know you had. You may hear something today and you may say, I can actually do that. I didn't think I could do it when this started. I can do that. That will make me very happy, right? I want you to know your magnificence, basically. So I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am known out in the world as a media visibility strategist, media visibility shaman and coach. I say shaman because my work is the inside outside. I very much believe that when we alter the inside positively, it reflects on the outside. And I'm, I am chief of putting the fun back into profundity. I'm from Dare to Dream Knockout Training Podcast and Programs. And after 12 years of liberating entrepreneurs from the curse of nobody sees me, nobody sees my programs, and the myth of I'm struggling for exposure, I know without question that you can make massive amounts of money and impact, even millions, even if you've been invisible for years. So if you are willing to flip the switch in your thinking, turn off this old school mentality of 
yeah, I got to do it like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And instead follow your true north of what lights you up and turns you on, you're in the right place. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I help people write a page turner book. I'm a private coach and a group coach. Also, I have a company that takes author's books to a guaranteed international bestseller. And I teach the ultimate visibility program for how you can be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get mad, wonderful results. So if you're a dog lover or in the pet industry, I am taking submissions for authors for a book. It's called The Ultimate Book for Dog Lovers. And understand it's not ultimate, it's mutt, M-U-T-T, -T, ha ha. So it's the ultimate book for dog lovers, and it's an anthology book. Um, for, for many of you that will speak to, you'll have to reach out to me about that privately. And here's what I, why I bring that up. Even though this is about how you can write your own book, I bring that up because I have been getting more calls in the last few days and people registering, I think 65, 70% of the chapters are gone already. So that tells me there is a pulse out there that's changing that people are saying, I want in. I've been getting calls about my bestseller program, about can you be my book writing coach privately? And I'm watching something that hasn't happened for six weeks and it is happening. So this is good news for us all. We are so hungry to get our message out there. And that makes me very happy. So if you wanna claim a chapter, do reach out to me. And also during this very interesting time, I'm launching for the first time an affordable and very easy way for you to finally write your book. And it's called the Visible Visionaries Monthly Book Writing Membership, and it's for authors just like yourself. So if you're interested in that, I will tell you more about that at the end. And here's what I'm gonna to cover today. First is going to be how to brainstorm ideas for your book. Second is writing your outline. And third is getting it written. Stay until the end because we're gonna be doing a Q&A and you may have live questions. And again, if it's okay with you later on, I'll tell you about how to work with me further so you can complete and publish your book. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I am so thrilled to be here with you all. And brainstorming ideas for your book, very important, right? Because if you're going to write a book, it's nice to know what you're writing about. Where are you beginning? What are you called to? What are you inspired to write about? So I'm going to tell you about an idea, and I want to harken back to what I said in the beginning, following your true north. I am very much a coach who is not cookie cutter. I can tell you lots of ways to recipe, but I love working with people exactly where they are and exactly who they are. That's what turns me on, and that's what I'd like actually someone to do with me. Don't try to make me into some kind of system and put me through a line. It's never gonna work. I, I'm always gonna be definitely different, right? And so my processes, my brilliances, my weaknesses, how you speak to me is how you might understand how to pull something out of me. So that's what I wanna do for you. So let's put out quite a few ideas so you'll find maybe a path that works for you. There are some of you here today who say, oh, I know what I wanna write about, but let's widen back a little bit and talk about a system. If you have heard of the choreographer Twyla Tharp, very, very famous, she wrote a book called The Creative Habit. And Twyla called the early stages of idea generation scratching. It's a really cool idea. So she said, you know, rather than wait for the big idea to hit, like the theme of your novel, for instance, she said, let's say that this is the plot or your story. You can instead start scratching for a small idea first. I'm gonna flesh this out for you. So the idea actually can come from anywhere. It is, scratching is like an inspiration. Your idea could come from a painting. Your idea could come from a random item in your purse. Your idea can come from a horoscope or an Enneagram, a musical soundtrack. Maybe you start with a childhood memory or you find a vintage photograph. Maybe you are somewhere and you overhear a conversation and something gets generated. So scratching gives you something tangible to start with, a memory, an experience, a sensation, boom, inspiration. 
And you take that idea, however small, and you can expand it into more ideas. So how this works is that a single image, a sound, a scent, can set off a waterfall of associations. Maybe it's a particular song that launches some of you through layers of your past in memory. So the one idea produces another until we have this takeoff of memories and inventions and it's all sparked from that initial glimmer. Scratching is definitely not linear. Scratching is definitely not logical. And it's okay to not see the connections. We just trust that something's rushing out of us. So what I recommend always when you're starting your book is remain open for what comes out. In fact, I tell all my authors one thing over and over and over again because I wanna make sure it sinks in. And that is this, we write until our first draft is done. We never, never, never edit until we're done with the draft, first draft. Usually there's one to four drafts after we finished a book. So just write, just let it flow, be in the holy flow of whatever goes on. When you're going to scratch for ideas, the key is to just keep yourself open for everything that swims in. You're just going to trust that your mind has this urge to roam. It's really lovely. Um, sometimes I call this in my life widening back, and I'll tell you how I use it in life. Because there are times, have you ever had this happen where you're at the precipice of something and you feel like, I really need to decide what to do. I'm not really sure what to do. Do I go this way or that way? And I, it just feels like it's this. It feels so myopic. And I will tell myself at a time like that, just widen back, Debbie. Just widen back. Because when I widen back, I have no attachment. I have no need. I have no requirement. I just be, if you will. And often when I widen back and there's a fluidity in my space, and there is space for things to roam, Things will come in that are really unexpected. Often I'm seeing the matrix of what is, and that really surprises me. But what I know is that the solution, the clarity, always comes, and it's often a surprise. And it's so simple when I'm not buck up against something. So try not to be buck up against your book. Try to just let yourself roam and be very fluid with what is, and we don't worry about what's coming out because we're not in an editing phase. We're in a creating phase, and everybody who knows creations like ugh, colors, outside of the box, going with what is, having fun, allowing, receiving, be in that. It's really great to remain intuitive. It's really great to even allow an emotion, but not intellect at this stage. Twyla Tharp, the author of The Choreographer, said, the first steps of a creative of any creative act are like groping in the dark, random and chaotic, feverish and fearful, a lot of busyness with no apparent or definable end in sight. And some people get very antsy with this. That may not be their comfort zone, so they may be deeply uncomfortable in that space of not knowing what we're writing about, not knowing where we're going, but it's really good to resist that urge to wrestle ideas into something prematurely before the raw material has had a chance to incubate, coagulate, if you will. And really the beauty of scratching is that we let go of preconceived notions so that something almost more amazing can be born out of us instead of what we think we should be writing. I think that's a, a big problem, especially in our time, and hopefully it will not be going forward anymore. But we've all grown up in this world so much of business and entrepreneurship being told what to do and how many components it takes to do it, and the marketing and the teamwork and the, what you put out in the world and the media ways you put it out in the world. And it becomes really cumbersome because we're not all built for all of that. And it's not our wheelhouse or a joy spot. And so it is with writing too, to not get mired down in the shoulds. And that's really handy because it allows you to be unstuck because all you need to get going really is something small. So I recommend that you improvise, that you riff. It's like jazz, right? Just scale on the small idea no matter how tiny. And don't question it. Don't overthink it. Let it lead you. Scratch for something because it can become bigger. Don't know where you're going. That's so perfect for right now. 
don't know where you're going. Just embrace that. So to start with, just scratch, allow, inspire. Scratching is definitely another word for brainstorming. Brainstorming is supposed to be about harnessing the power of thinking outside of the box to solve this impossible problem. And it's magic. It allows you to find some really amazing, unique ideas and ideas that will continue the inspiration forward. So you get this new view, these new perspectives, and it gives you this confidence to make decisions, to find a new view that works for you and know, oh, I'm on a track here. There's some kind of track. I may not be able to nail it down, but there's something great happening here. And it's that feeling of being so close. Not quite there, but there's something close. So here's the next piece. Ask what if. What if? So when you simply ask what if, you can turn everything on its head, which is very exciting for you as a writer and definitely for people who are reading. Many fiction writers advocate asking yourself what if. What if is a great question if you're stuck. What if is a great question even when your writing is going well. It pushes your story a little more, your characters a little more, wondering what might happen if something changed. And using a brainstorming prowess to run with it, it's a really good way to get a different view on a project or on a problem. Ask questions. Oddly, most of us already have the answers that we're looking to where it's close to us, right? It's somewhere in there. And even if we feel stuck, ah, because we're not sifting through all the questions and the rest of the creative noise, we can par it down to that answer we wanted. So it's okay, ask lots of questions at this creative stage. I'll tell you what I tell all my authors. A book is a living entity. And if you wanna know something, ask your book. Your book will actually tell you. It's so beautiful. We don't have to be in a knowing in any logic position. We can also idea switch. The idea switch can be used by setting a time limit. So when the time is up, look at what you've been working on. It's a really good way to kick rust out of your creativity, force yourself to rethink the approach you've been working on, grab the juicy idea for the story and write 500 words about it. Grab the idea, write 500 words, don't even stop, just make the writing flow, flow, flow. And if all of a sudden out of nowhere, your inner critics pop up and say, we need to call a board meeting. Say, thank you very much, time out, and I'm going to put you to bed. Thank you, love you, and don't worry if it offends them because you can remind them, oh, I get to call on you for the revision. That's where you're gonna come in. I'm gonna need that critical voice then, not now. Now is about creativity. So for now, you're in an uprising. Write down something you don't even dare to write. In fact, I dare you to write it. So tip number two, and this is very helpful for a lot of people, and it's about writing an outline. One of the big things I use all the time in my life, in my business, with my clients, is reverse engineering. I love it. I don't know about you, but for me, in general, linear thinking doesn't tend to be wonderful. I even do it if I'm going on a trip. Okay, if I have to be at the airport at this time, I start there. And then what, is, what has to happen before the airport? Okay, I have to be in the cab of the Uber to get there. Okay, what time do I have to call them and what kind of traffic? Okay, what time do I need to wake up uh, to get my coffee and uh, my last minute things packed? Okay, and when do I need to take the dog to the pet sitter? Okay, and when do I need to pack? And when you reverse engineer things, we do very well because we are pretty definitive when we figure out the inception of where we're beginning. It's usually right on and very helpful. All the pieces are laid out for us. So as with most things, it's really hard to know what to expect from writing until you're in the midst of it. So here are some of the things you can utilize from the start. I wanna tell you this, and I wanna release you from this idea. If, if this is the only thing you bless me for sharing with you, that's a good thing. I'll have done my job. Writing's block, writer's block is a myth. Writer's block does not exist. Writer's block is not really a thing. There is no gate crashing down in your brain suddenly that says, oh, I'm gonna stop you from writing. Your muse doesn't suddenly turn her back on you. Huh, can't be bothered. Muses never do that. 
Muses are there to muse, right? So if you should ever find yourself at a standstill, take a deep breath. Just stop, breathe like anything else in your life and go back to the beginning and take a fresh look. See what you're doing. See maybe where things went off track and start from there. And it helps, really. So get out of your mind that there's such a thing as any kind of block. Blocks don't exist. There may be a momentary derailment, but that's okay. It's like life. You just breathe and go back, find where that happened. Ah, you'll be tracking yourself and start again. Sometimes outlines are great. Sometimes they aren't. I'm being very honest with you and transparent. I've written half my books with outlines, half without. You decide. So maybe you want to write into the wind. That's terrific. Your book will still get done. All I know is that books like writers have really different personalities. So just go with what works for you and for that specific project. That's what's best. And be patient with yourself. If you give it time, things will always work out, right? The plot's going to unwind. Yesterday, yesterday's words are going to be better today than you thought. And maybe if you had a little bit of a hiccup yesterday, then today you're going to wake up and find that your book is begging you to get started and to write. So trust that because it is fluid like everything else. Once you know what your topic is and the topic idea is formed, begin outlining the chapters or the sections of your book. And I'm going to give you an example of this so you, you have a visceral, maybe a visual if you're a visual person and you're hearing me, what that looks like for you and how you can implement that. You want to try to think, like I was saying before about reverse engineering, try to think about the end of your book first. Questions such as, what do you want your readers to walk away with at the end? How do you want the story to culminate? Once you have a general idea of how the book is going to end, then you can cultivate, you can create the outline moving toward that end. So if, you, if you're writing nonfiction, for example, you may be breaking down chunks of information to teach your readers something sequential. Or every single chapter may be an individual lesson or an essay on its own, all leading to this final uniting point or message. You may decide you want to support or enhance the material with stories, quotes, or examples. And you can try a skeletal outline for a book. So let's do one together so you have an idea of it. Let's say that you are writing a book on meditation. So your outline could be something like this. Introduction. About the book. Chapter one. What is meditation? And now all I'm going to include are bullet points. I'm not going to flesh it out, just bullet points. And here are some possibilities. History of meditation. Types of meditation. Meditation and mindfulness. A brief summary of what meditation is. Chapter two, beginning your practice. Again, some bullet points. Learning to breathe. How to sit. The monkey mind how to relax. So you get the idea, this is a skeleton outline. It's easy, it's quick, you get your ideas down on paper, and it's basically your guideline to get your book done. You know where to start, you know where to start writing and how to move through. When you write a fiction book, it's a little bit different because you're creating a narrative. So you want to spend time brainstorming, allowing your imagination to create a story in your head, and always, always, always take notes while you're brainstorming. And then you come back and you begin fleshing out the outline. You've, your outline basically involves deciding the characters, the roles they're gonna play in your story. And once you have a general idea of the main characters, you can use a skeletal outline for your story, or you can write a really brief summary of the story. And then you can determine how the story is broken up into chapters. One of the things, by the way, I can't cover it here. Of course, I don't have the time, but I will be covering in the Visible Visionaries monthly membership is how to write a page turner. I gotta tell you, with the amount of books coming out all the time, one of the most important things I feel is what delineates your book from somebody else's. What makes your book pop? What makes your book the book that if people are standing around a Starbucks or a cooler, Starbucks is actually a place I hear a lot of people talking about books these days, and say, I wanted to go to bed last night. 
and I was a chapter three in so-and-so's book, one of you maybe, and I couldn't put it down. I was up till two or three in the morning. It was a page turner. That should be your book. So if we're gonna write a book and take all that time, I will be teaching you how to write a page turner. There are so many beautiful techniques to do that. And it really makes our book stand out and be a winner. And we all wanna be a winner. We're gonna take the time to write something that's important to us. So we're fleshing out our outline. We're, involved, we're uh, deciding what's involved, who's involved, what the story, what the plot is. And an outline basically makes your ultimate writing process a lot easier because you have a game plan to follow. And it is really beneficial because it forces you to flesh out the idea, the inception, right, that you came up with that got you very juicy and excited in the beginning and say, okay, now I've got the chapters. Now I know how to structure my book's message. Now I know where I'm heading. So now we've got tip number three, which is getting the book written, getting the darn book written. <laughs> Books change lives. They absolutely change lives. The process changes lives. My whole life is entirely different because of books, both by being a writer and a coach. Most unexpected. Although anybody who does hand, the science of hands or numerology or human design will tell you it's all over my chart. Teaching, leading, inspiring, masses, books, being in front of, I'm doing what I'm here to do. My clients, they may have completely different charts, but I will tell you, books change lives. So, you know, celebrities, you might have noticed, usually write their books because they want to set the record straight. Or maybe they want to explain the twisted story of their rise to stardom. How did they get there? I myself have written books to help people. The books that I've written have been to help people, the full books, and the anthology chapters. I participated in at least 13 anthologies. Those anthology chapters all have been about inspiration and sharing something to really uh, important to move people forward, different. So my books, Dare to Dream, This Life Counts, my book, Wisdom to Success, The Surefire Secrets to Accomplish All Your Dreams, as well as PR Magnet, Create Best-Selling Books and Attract Free Podcast Interviews. I have received countless emails from readers all around the world thanking me for my information. I've received emails from people in Spain who said, we're using your books as a mastermind and we meet every month to talk about creating dreams and we're creating them how meaningful this is to know there's a legacy, that something's been left that is changing in my very small way, changing people's lives. And by virtue of doing them and coaching, they've also changed my life. So a book is something tangible that you point to as a repository of your knowledge. And it's not like a blog post because a book is really organized. A book works cohesively. And people take books way more seriously than any other form of writing. When you become a book author, you have a level of credibility like nothing else. Writing a book, being able to say that you're an author has a lot of prestige and a lot of distinction. So I'm wondering, I don't yet know you all, but I would ask you to think about this in your space or if you want to write in the chat, where is your book? You're a writer, I believe this to be so. Why haven't you written a book? For some people, you know, the idea is big and scary. It's like, I, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know where to start. And I am definitely living proof that it's not as hard as you think it might be to face those fears of the unknown, to move forward and get your book out into the world. You could be afraid of rejection. Maybe I'll write something and people won't love it. Or... How will I do this? How will I do this entire process? How will I start to finish, publish, bestseller? It feels big. Well, you're with me. You don't have to fear. You found somebody who knows. And have you heard of Mark Victor Hansen? What a story, right? Chicken Soup for the Soul. I mean, it's so beautiful. He is one of the guys who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, as you know, along with Jack Canfield, a book that has made millions, millions, and billions of dollars and spawned countless spin-off products, like the original anthology, actually. And yet that book was rejected 140 
kinds. And Mark believed in his book. He refused to accept any of those rejections, but he kept going. And it's amazing because ultimately, I think it was Jack's inspiration. He widened back, just like I told you, right? He was scratching, he was brainstorming. I don't know what to do. I'm getting rejected. I'm right here. What if I widen back? And he suddenly got this idea. What if I sold this book for a dollar a piece? The rest is history. He made, was that his first million? I mean, the story is really amazing just by following inspiration. So I got to ask you, what's stopping you? Because if you've ever written an article, if you've ever written a blog post or an ebook, why not publish a real print book of your own, a book that is your legacy? Why haven't you written it yet? And if you're stuck, what stopped you? I know that it's the dream of a huge number of people to write a book, but it is also one of the most procrastinated tasks in history. And for so many reasons, people put off writing a book like uh, they put off writing a will. <laughs> because they're deathly afraid of it. But let me give you some other ideas for writing. Writing quickly really helps. It's the only way to get it out faster is to write a lot. Write every day or write most days if possible. Don't let the details slow you down. Don't let an idea of perfection slow you down. Won't work for you. Throw that out the window. The most important thing to do is start and the next most important thing to do is to keep going. And pre-write. You can pre-write in your head. People are taking walks now all the time, right? As you shower, as you jog or work out, as you drive. So when you sit down to actually write, you already have things to start typing about. You can go somewhere where there is no internet or cell phone. So you can write in long gushes of time. Boy, just the lack of distraction alone is paramount. And get support. Find support so you're accountable. Find support so you can get where you're going fast. Work with a coach, work with a group. It's a game changer. So this is the most amazing time right now to get started. Like I am so jazzed about it and I'll tell you why. More people right now are writing books than ever before. More people are reading books than ever before, because what are people doing to pass the time? Book sales are way up right now. And wouldn't it be lovely if yours was one of the books that so many people were finally having the time to sit down and ingest and read and enjoy and write a review for, or maybe connect with you after reading your book and want to collaborate with you or hire you or be part of your tribe or followers or be at one of your workshops, whether it's online or in person. There are so many ways that a book calls out ahead of us, shines our light in front of us. And now, now, now is the time. So instead of thinking, I can't write, what should I write about? Who want to write, read anything that I write anyway? Hear me out. Like I've written three international bestsellers and I've contributed to all the anthologies I told you about. It just takes a step at a time. It takes doing it. And more writers are indie authors than ever before, self-published authors. And what we're basically doing is we've adopted very professional publishing practices. And that's because from finish to market is easy inexpensive, fast. But why else would you want to write your book? Well, being an author of a published book gives you loads of credibility, authority, name recognition. And if you write a book related to your profession where you're an expert, the book serves as a calling card for your potential clients and it's a great way to generate new business. You're going to be viewed as an expert and someone who carries some clout in the industry. If you're wondering, well, how long is it gonna take me to write a book? Well, the answer actually depends on a couple of data points. One is, how long will your book in question be? Is it 100 pages, 200, 300, 350? How fast are you able to write or type? What, what is your level of commitment to doing it? Is it every day, every other day, once a week for many hours? And how many drafts will you consider? As you heard me before, bare minimum of one, two and three are better. 
So for all practical intents and purposes, each draft of the book takes about the same amount of time to complete. So uh, it depends. Some people say it takes 30 days for each draft. It's never taken me that long. I do it in days. I can't imagine. Yeah, I do my drafts in days. But even if you took a week or 30 days, let's just say that if you did even that, what I'm telling you is if you finished your book, did your draft, made your changes, did your draft, made your changes, you can have a book in 90 days. You can have a book in 90 days to give to an editor, which means you can publish your book this year and get it done. So the best question to ask is, how do I write a great book? A great book that's gonna be around years from now, an evergreen book that's gonna withstand the best of time, the test of time. How do I create that book that's gonna be part of a series that's gonna make a really big impact in the world? And does it cost more to do a book like that? Not really, because if you value your time and you realize you can get help from an expert who's gone through the process again and again and again, what is that worth? right? When you realize that your book is your intellectual property that lasts for your entire life plus 70 years, you're looking at an investment that should offer a substantial return for the time and money that you invest in it. So for some of you, and there's way more I'm going to share, but I do want to take a breath here and say, for some of you, you're thinking, I want help. I know I want to go further. I'm ready to do this. And you will see in the chat box, that there is a URL and I have set up right now at a price point I've never done before and I probably will never do again. People, there will be people here who have worked with me privately and worked with me in groups previously over the many years and they know what I charge. So this is about as special an opportunity as it's gonna get. So if you go to debbiedashinger.com slash visible visionaries, you will see the membership site and you can register today. There is a monthly and there is also a one year super save saver. And I will also tell you later on some of what you're going to get because I am bonusing $4,000 of unbelievable gifts so that even by the time I'm finished speaking and you have ordered, you will get started and receive those gifts. This is how great this is. So I just want to take a look at time right now. Okay, great. So for those of you, please go ahead and sign up and stay with me because I want to help you get your book done and finished because if it's time to tell your story, I'm going to support you through the monthly membership Zoom calls. I'm going to teach you how to get the book done and published and it's a mastermind group. It is private and there's going to be writers from all around the world participating and you can bring any genre of your book, any genre of what's in your heart to work on, that you have in your mind and your heart to tell and write. And the more work you do up front, the easier the book is to produce. And I gotta say, for anyone who's thinking about writing, it's okay to be scared and do it anyway. Have hope, have inspiration. And, and I wanna talk a little bit about the definition of success for authors, because there are a lot of reasons why authors want to write books, sometimes nonfiction books in particular, and they have possible definitions of success. See what resonates for you, and you'll feel into what might help you to understand better what it is you're here to write. So you may want to help people around a specific topic and see if that one calls to you, because usually that means you've been through an experience yourself, and that drives the writing of your book. And that was an experience that I had with one of my clients, Lauren. She wrote a book to change her own life because she was living with bipolar. And now this best-selling book helps people discover that bipolar, from her beautiful point of view, is actually a gift. It's not a deterrent. It's not a disorder. I mean, she actually talks about the brilliance of bipolar and what she can perceive that other people can't. And this book is so good. It sells every month still and continues to help people. That's pretty exciting, right? That's a really nice way to serve people. Another way of a book being a success is you have a business already. 
and you want a book to demonstrate authority, you want to augment your business, you want to open the doors to speaking or other business opportunities. So the point of that book, it's not necessarily to make money, but it's to actually drive people to the rest of your business. This is, you've heard it out there, this is my book as a business card model. I have a client, Mark, who did just that. So the aim of Mark's book was to provide leadership on the job in a really unique and effective way. And the definition of his book success was based on the fact that he started to speak on stage because of the book. He began to be interviewed on TV shows. And so his book's business model opened the door for him to get where he wanted to go further in his career, right? See if you resonate with that. Another one, another model, if you will, is that you're deeply fascinated with a subject. Boy, I'm thinking about a woman I haven't thought about for years. That's interesting. This one comes up. It's such a good example. Liz, this is an old, 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 old client who wanted to write a book on genealogy. And she used massive research about her own family as the launching point. But in it, she taught people how to do their own genealogy. And so it's really interesting doing something when you're fascinated with a topic because you're basically producing a seminal work on the subject. And this is the type of nonfiction book that often goes on to win literary prizes. It's a book that could be commissioned and it definitely consumes the author while they're writing it. I also had another client, Bob, and he blended military thriller and science fiction. That was his genre here, and he won a lot of book awards doing it. Next option is you have an audience and you write to fulfill their needs, that, which often coincides with your own interests. That's a good one when it's both, when it's a marriage. I started out writing nonfiction, why? Because I started creating dreams. I learned a recipe and I was like, oh my God. That's why I started my podcast, Dare to Dream. Oh my God, I understand something I never understood before. I can use this recipe for everything in my life. And I've seen over and over and over again, there's one result, success. I'm creating every dream. And I was on fire to let people know. Thus my first radio show 13 years ago and now radio slash podcast show. Then my subsequent books, like I gotta reach more people, right? So this is very much my interest at the time and very much what I want, I profoundly wanted to teach people. So I'm telling people how to create their dreams into reality and also concurrently, here's a little secret there, while I'm doing it, I'm discovering deeper, deeper about that subject that I think I know a lot about already as an expert just by writing about it. Cool, huh? And then the final one is, you may want to use a nonfiction book for sales as a basis of income. So you may want to write multiple books in a niche and you may want to dominate that market. Some authors make it their full-time living. I know many. And by the way, let me take a pause here to say as the thought comes up, that one of the things I'm doing in these membership calls, I'm super excited. So every top of the month, we get another piece about how to write and get moved forward. Some real clarity on being an exceptional writer and some real ease about how to write in your space. The second time we meet every month, there's going to be some fluidity there. There will be times when you will be meeting with a professional writer who makes a living doing this and learning more about how they do what they do out in the world. And I'm telling you, as I've done this before, game changer for the students, always for the participants. Also, I'm gonna be bringing in some healers now and then who'll be doing some energy shifts if you're feeling some blockages in your space. What's great about that, and what's really great about that is not only will it assist and influence your writing, but it will positively impact and help your entire life, right? Threads carry through our whole lives. Also, our second time to meet is a great time for Q&A, and it's also a great time for you to read your work. Another of my clients, Thomas, writes graphic novels, and based on one character, he wrote a 13-book series. I'll tell you what's great about the graphic novels that he's written. They are looking at them right now. There's an agency looking at them to make them into movies. His books fit in at Comic-Con. 
He has agents looking at him for various writing jobs going on in the future. So you can do the writing for sales for a living. So once you've decided on what writing success means to you, then decide on the specific topic for your book. Is it a children's book? Is it a memoir, self-help, a novel? Decide on the genre you feel called to write and then narrow down the topic. So this is really the truth. Anybody can write. You actually don't need permission. There's no license required. There's no test to take. Very little physical requirements, financial requirements, just a computer or a pen and determination to do it. Because, you know, if Voltaire and the Marquis de Sade could write in prison, you can do it too. So whether you're in suburbia, you're in the city, you're at lunch, you're at work, you're writing after your kids are asleep, you can do it, right? So writers are often great at one thing, which is not writing. <laughs> It's the only class of professionals who have a sympathy making excuse for doing nothing and or taking uh, guilt free naps. It's really important to show up instead of the maybe next year, maybe next month, maybe I'll find time. Really do it. You can get ready to be visible and you can be part of writing your book. So if you don't want to do the challenge alone, I have a fantastic live online writing membership. I promised I'd talk about it and then I'll take some questions. And it is lined up. You can do it one month at a time for a lot of guidance and wisdom and a lot more than I was able to share in the webinar. You can join me to explore completing your book in the monthly membership and have your book done this year. People dream of writing a novel with dozens of fits and starts and they all have these scattered chapters to show for it. Writing is not as hard as we make it to be. So you can sign up for the membership and meet your teammates, start your assignments and attend the group membership Zoom meetings. You're gonna understand how wonderful this environment is. So you can meet your goal, you can have your book finished in just three short months. And here's some of what you're gonna learn. The overall look at writing your book, where to write, how to write, how much to write. And by the way, this is specific for every author. So you will alone, individual, find out your own system indigenous to you. How to design and tell your story. Creating a page turner. How to write through fear. Learning about supporting characters. How to write about secrets. Transformation of what drives your book. Committing to and finishing your book and how. After your book is written. Your book cover, your book title, and writing your book to bestseller. And even more, because you're gonna bring all your questions and your wins. And I wanna entice you. I wanna tip the scales here so that you have to say yes. Because here's what you get when you register for the monthly membership today. You also get these bonuses. Free attendance, twice monthly, expert live Zoom coaching writing sessions. You're going to get access to the How to Write a Book Special Report, you're going to get exclusive audios of three conversations with authors who are right now making a very nice living writing, and you're gonna get all their wisdom and tips. I'm going to gift you with a book writing template. What that means is a book generally, a standard book is six by nine. I am sending you a six by nine template so that you can type your book into the template and it is pre-formatted for you, ready to be published and upload to Amazon when you're done. You're also gonna receive module one of the book writing program so that you're gonna learn right away the entire system. How do I write? Where do I write? What location? What do I turn off? What do I turn on? And how to get your successful book project started. And because I really do want to entice you to join for the year so I can really hold your hand through this and all aspects of your visibility, when you join the one-year program for the Super Saver price as my gift to you in addition to that, you're going to get free access to the $2,000 online program, How to Write a Book in 60 Days. You're going to get an audio from me to you that is going to explain to you how to write your book title, how to make a book cover and where to get it done, and how to take your book to bestseller. Wow.
right? That's $4,000 worth of valuable gifts you receive just for signing up. So go to debbie-singer.com slash visible visionaries. So what else is there? Visible visionaries. How about some spiritual advice? Archangel Meg, Meg, excuse me, Archangel Metatron. Yeah, Archangel Metatron says this. Take a leap of faith. Follow your dreams. Receive unexpected opportunities. The angels say that you're entering a new and exciting phase of your life. Now is the time for faith and commitment to your dreams. Take any necessary steps to move forward with confidence. And the sole guidance behind that is we all know that dreams need to be pursued and action needs to be taken. We also know that we need support and that we need assistance when we hit our roadblocks. So a leap of faith is always asked for when it comes to pursuing your dream. We all know it. And if we really want it, we find a way. And if we don't, we find an excuse. So what holds you back? Is it money? Is it courage? I could ask you to close your eyes and say, what is your biggest challenge in writing a book? And I hope you write that in the chat. And when it comes to the topic of writing your book, what's your biggest fear about writing a book? What's the biggest fear you're facing? What's the biggest frustration you're facing? Because things like this will be taken into the live membership and addressed. And if all of this was taken care of and your book was done, what would your dream day look like? So don't go it alone. That's the best advice I can give you. And since you've already taken step one and you are here with me attending this webinar, why not build on the momentum, right? I, um, I built this just for you at this time. So this is the Visible Visionaries, get your book done from inception to completion. And we're gonna integrate it with your storytelling skills, your book opening middle and end clarified for you, page turning mastery, and the ability to capture your authentic voice, plus to fulfill the desire to really impact the reader that you're wanting to reach and target. So take a deep breath, the time is now, take the leap. And the best part is, once you experience these life-changing commitments and reach the book goal, your attitude to all big changes and challenges are really going to be altered. You're gonna feel that confidence that comes when you write the book that you know has been inside of you. There are no risks, there's everything to gain. How to begin writing a book, how to stay on track, to understand best writing habits, to work through your questions, to write a page turner book, to structure your book, and to finish your manuscript from start to finish. And remember, Visible Visionaries is here to offer you the best content with actionable steps. Grow your dream, write your book. And I'm going to put on my glasses and see if there's anybody here towards the end who had any questions. And go into, there are lots, wonderful, okay. Um, I'm going to scroll up to the beginning and see. Okay. This is great, Michelle. So Michelle writes, I can't figure out the focus of my book. I'm a perfectionist. So I want it to be the right one. Yikes. Well, Michelle, I hope you got a lot out of what I shared. And if you didn't hear the beginning, you definitely want to want to go back and listen to the replay because I happen to address very specifically at the beginning not being a perfectionist, that the whole idea, and I'll reiterate it here, the whole idea when we write the first draft of our book is creativity. We are not the editor at that point. Editing comes in later. So when the, the voices go off in your head that are the critic, you thank them, you bless them, and you say, just not right now. You're coming back in on the first draft, and I'll love your input then. But right now, we're in flow, baby. So be in the holy flow. Thanks for the question. Okay, I see something from Paul. Yeah, putting it together, Paul, use the outline that I talked about. That will help a lot. Come to the class and I'll help you personally. Um, and the group, of course, accountability will help you as well know how to get there as we break it down. And okay, this is great. Paul said, I believe that my journey to becoming a CEO started in my youth and my experiences over the past 40 years prepared me, but I, here's the MO, but not in the typical way. That's the book right there. 
everything that's not typical is exactly where you want to go. Anything that's different is really exciting. I'm actually reading a book right now and I've already started dog earing the pages because I want to bring it to the first, um, one of the first uh, membership calls because I'm going to read out loud when we get closer to page turner so you guys can hear what hooks you in. I'm not even going to tell you why I'm reading it. I'm going to hook you in as I read it. It's not my work. It's somebody else's and it's pure genius. You take something that's different, like what Paul's talking about, and then you put in a twist and people can't put down your book. Big, big, big. Okay. Um, Judy, let's see. My heart really wants to share my message with the world, my greatest gift to the world, the book that could transform the greatest number of lives. Yeah. Beautiful. So beautiful. Exactly. So Judy, you'd be the first example that I talked about where something has happened to you in your life. And by virtue of that happening to you, you know, it is yours to share out to the world because of the lives you'll change. Perfect example. Kristen, you're so welcome. I appreciate your kind remarks. And um, Michelle wants to inspire other women. Beautiful. It's okay. So the info for the mastermind is here, Michelle. I'll retype it. And um, oh my God, that's so <laughs> No, I didn't know, Paul, that was you. That's so beautiful. You may not remember me, Debbie, but I sent you a copy. I do remember this. This is a long time ago. I sent you a copy of your book, Dare to Dream, with pages full of tabs. Ah, that's beautiful. And now here he is. You know, that's so gorgeous. So w when is it your time, my darling, for your book to be dog-eared by somebody and sent back to you so that you know who is out there reading your book? Hello. <laughs> so I'm going to put this up so you can see this easier. Um, and actually, I think I have to make it a little smaller. Sorry about that. But if I'm going to read your um Anyway, I'll put it back up at the very end so you can see it. I want to keep keep reading. That's so beautiful. Uh, uh, uh. That's so incredible that he would be here. That's like a full circle moment, right? Where somebody, um, you're ready. Oh, you are ready. You just have to spell my name right. It's D-E-B-B-I. -E There's no E. And that's important because if you're going to go to the website and register, D you have to spell my name and both names are different. It's D-E-B-B-I. -E there is no E. And the last name is Austrian, so it's D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. Spelled, we say Dashinger because it's the USA, but it's not even how it's said abroad. So Debbie Dashinger is D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash Visible Visionaries. And um, I'm so, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. I really do remember you sending me that book. Um, so what else do I want to say? I want to give you a little bit more here at the end, and then we're going to close out. And I just want to say how gorgeous all of you have been and so participatory. I'm so excited by how much um, this is generating for you, because that's, that's what it's all about. It, that's really the bottom line, that this starts the brain percolating. And if the brain is percolating, that means inspiration is right behind. I'm going to ask each of you to be emboldened in whatever remains of your life. And if this time has taught you anything, it is so how incredibly precious life is, our connection is, and we don't know any of us anymore. If we didn't know it before, we really don't know. Do we have a day? Do we have a week? Do we have a month? Do we have 97 years? So if you don't go for the gusto now, when will you do it? Don't die with a dream in your heart. Don't die with your book inside of you, the song unsung. This is your time, right? That's why I'm doing this. You've got nothing to lose. You've got everything to gain and you cannot miss. You can't miss with these calls. I'm gonna personally take you by the hand. I'm gonna show you how to do what you're here to do so that you overcome obstacles and concerns and instead you go into the modality of pure writing freedom and joy. It's so fun. The people I work with come back and tell me not only how much they love it, but they're often like, oh, I'm working with you again, coming back for the next book. It's like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. Let's keep doing it. So I also want you to have a vision. 
that you expect a really big celebration. Like keep that inside of you right now, that vision of you celebrating with our entire group behind you <laughs> as you hit your mark, you finish your book. We all watch and support you while it's being published. So I am your friend. I am your writing coach. It is my pleasure and my honor to be here with you today. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I would love to help you get what you're doing out into the world, visible visionaries. And the beautiful thing about people who work with me is once you work with me and you're in the system, all the other delicious pieces of what I do become yours at a discount. You never pay what other people pay on the outside who come in for the pieces. So the international best-selling book launch, discount. The ultimate visibility formula, how to get booked, interviewed on podcasts and get amazing, crazy awesome results. It is a discount. And everything therein, all the pieces, the retreats and so forth that I offer, you become part of a tribe. And we work together because visibility is everything. We are the light workers. We chose to be here to shine our light, not to hide. And so being visible, having exposure is the greatest piece, the greatest component of why our soul came here right now. So it is your time to shine the light. Come aboard, the train is moving and I'd love to have you. It's debbie-inger.com slash visible visionaries. I'll put this up again so you have it to look at. And I truly do adore each and every one of you. I can't wait to work with you on your book and the beautiful, the beautifulness you're gonna create with your words out into the world. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, everybody.